So we're at the Nuke Yard yet again. I know it's getting a bit dull and tedious, but I'm always here because that's unfortunately where the work is right now. Even though I am pulling honey, you'll see on the buckwheat yesterday, all the clearboards are on there on the 25 hives. I took 26, but there's, I think, two queenless and one that's absconded. So we're still going to extracting honey from 25, which is pretty good for me. Uh, but here I've just been checking the last batch of queens that I put in and every single one with the cage on the front is marks a queen right colony. So there's one here out of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, out of 13 that is queenless. So this has just had a cell from those cells I made that are in that, uh, that one over there and that one here. So I'm just taking the cell out of that one. That should still get queen right. We've still got plenty of time, good temperatures. And now I'm gonna check the second load but overall, I've been extremely lucky that everything is looking kind of peachy and colonies that had a cell put in, the first batch I did, seem to have a virgin walking around and the colony is now calm. It doesn't mean it's a foregone conclusion they're going to be okay because they've still got a lot of grounds to do. But all this whole lot, all out there, they're all going to get some uh, pollen sub in the next three days because I'm mixing up a load of pollen sub Ultra B with the Apis Biologic rocket fuel mixed into that, as well as the borage oil and the linseed oil. So we'll see how that does. But what I'm really pleased is to see that we've got good acceptance. And incidentally, I fed all these with a thymol syrup and they had their Apivar put in as I released the cages. And I really took a bit of a gamble thinking, is it going to make a difference? Are they going to kill the queen because of the thymol, because of the um, the smell from the amitraz? And you know what? <laughs> it may have even helped improve acceptance because there's some beautiful queens in there. Uh, I'm going to check this lot next. They're actually on the floor because I didn't have the rack in place, but they're fine. But we shall see. But that overall, I mean, to have so many bees in one area and get the acceptance we are, it shows I've kept them robbing down to a minimum. It shows that everything is kind of really doing well at the moment. So I've managed to make a few more nukes up there. You can probably see them. And any cells I've got less will go into there. I'm going to deal with them in a minute. Then that'll be the end of my cells. That's the last gasp, if you know what I mean. You get to a point in the year. I'm late anyway with this particular graft that I wouldn't, wouldn't normally do this late in the year but i did it because i knew there'd be one or two that are queenless which is completely normal i had a, remember i had a few there that were like four in a row that didn't accept the queens that's when the weather was absolutely rubbish they could have had a hive a row a load in the colony because don't forget i'm taking brood from colonies at the worst time of year to make these nukes so that might have contributed to irritation in the colony to virus load to overall rejection i don't know but um everything in here the whole of this apiary has had one strip of amitraz per box. So that's a really good thing as well. So all the time now, those varroa are dying off. Some of these were broodless completely when they had the amitraz, so that will work even quicker. Others have just started laying and others had brood hatching out as I was starting to requeen all of these. So it's a, it was a complete mix, but now it's all coming up to its, its natural level. I'm going to get these hives out tonight because this row is going to take its place. They're just waiting to go to another apiary, so I've got to get all that done as well. It's just busy, 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 and now I'm going to be doing lawn nights extracting because I can't get any more honey off until I've extracted what I've got in the veranda because it's getting really busy. So now I'm going to check this second row, see what the acceptance is in that is like. Fingers crossed it's good as well. So going down the row this side, Pretty good results overall. One there, queenless. That's got a cell. The other one was a queen I bought back in the same colony because I couldn't find her because she wasn't marked, but she was in the box, unfortunately. She actually didn't get a queen anyway, so that wasn't wasted. But here, I've got something to show you. Now, I like transparency. Occasionally, we get screw-ups. Look at this lid. See how it's slightly raised up on the end there? Because it wasn't like this should have been over and look what happens all those dead bees now these aren't the bees from the colony these will be the bees from other colonies that have gone in could be from colonies up there could be from any of these colonies and it could also be 
colonies from that box, but I don't think so. And unfortunately, there's a lot of losses there, but that is unfortunately beekeeping for you. But I'll check the feed level in the colony. It's pretty likely they got a good, good feed. If not, I'll give them some more. Let's see if this one's queen right. Looks quite well organized. Usually my amateur strippers away from the feeder, but this time it wasn't. Let's see what this is doing. These aren't very well spaced on the colony. This may have actually rejected their queen. Let's have a look. It's gonna get rid of this cage out of the way first because I don't want to kill the queen as we drag out if she is in there. Let's have a look at this, see what we can find. No eggs in that one I can see. So it looks like this one is queenless. They've got space to lay. No eggs in there. It could just be that the stress from that robbing caused them to reject that queen, but I doubt it. It's not usually that. And there's also drones scattered throughout, which means the queen or a queen hasn't pushed them out of the way, which usually is what I find. So this one's gonna get a cell straight away and another feed because it's quite light. No eggs in there at all, nothing decent. So this one will get a cell right now. So this is a post-harvest apiary. I caged these queens only last week, so it is pushing it a bit, but they'll be, be released the week after next. So what I'm coming back now is I'm coming back to take off the clearer boards. You can see the clearer boards there just underneath the roofs, but they'll just be easier to take off. And all the bees that were in the supers have gone down into the colony. All these hives are alive, which I'm pleased. So even though we haven't had a lot of Asian hornet and a lot of um, issues this summer with dead outs and stuff like that, I've got I've got made a lot of nukes. Every colony here gave me a split. And now I'm kind of looking at that as that's where they gave this year, because that's what's important that we maintain that stability. So now I'm gonna be, got my feeders here on the truck. Each one will get a feeder. Any I find where I didn't find the queen will get uh, Apivar today. So that'll be done. And I know that in another 11 days time, I think it's 11 days, I'll come back and vape this yard and that'll be done for the winter. And I'll probably give it two treatments. So hopefully a second vape four or five days after. A few Asian hornets around here, just starting one or two, but nothing, I mean nothing in comparison to what it was last year. Absolutely nothing. And all the colonies are good. They're all gonna have their doors put on today as well, but there's no stress on the colonies at all. Why this happened this year, I don't know. We could see an increase, but overall we would have seen a lot of hornets by now if we were gonna have a really bad year. So I know we'll have some, but it'll be nothing in comparison to what we had the year before. Because all there's still no real food around, so that's why I'm feeding all of these. So all these colonies are all alive on what they had in the brood box, which wasn't a lot. And that's what you've got to remember. My point of mentioning this is when you take that honey off, when you separate the brood box from the honey stores, most colonies will still, if it's not cold, leave the honey in the super and treat the colony as one. And the minute you take off that honey from the super, very often your colonies can literally crash if you don't give them some feed. So I'm giving them one-to-one. -one. I've got several buckets here with the one-to-one -one. they'll all have a good maybe two liters just for now i'll monitor it that will give them enough for a couple of weeks and hopefully then uh we will have the start of the ivy flow which i think this year might be all right because 
We've had some rain, we're gonna get more this week and generally the ground is moister and the ivy has been growing well and there's all flower buds coming on it really well on everything. So uh, this place where I am is absolutely loaded with it further around. There's a valley over there and there's ivy on everything. So they do really well. Let's get this lot done. And then we're on to the next one. I've got a harvest tonight with the buckwheat. That's just to lift the honey off because all the queens have been released at the buckwheat after I did the splits a couple of weeks ago, or more than that now. Uh, but the queens have been released and I'm ready to pull off the honey now and then get the treatment on that as well as soon as I can. Loads to do. Okay, so we are done, but I just wanted to show you this. This is what we're up against when you're trying to feed after doing bees in end of August when there's nothing around. But we have our dearth on, all these queens are caged and I've given them all a feed underneath the feeder and I don't like doing it because I, want, I don't want to feed for a, a, another week yet till I release these queens because these were the later caged ones of the later nukes I made. However, all the queens are good. All the brood is hatching out really quickly and it's looking great. I'm absolutely delighted. We'll have a nectar flow starting in about two weeks, which is when those other queens, all the last ones I caged, will be released. But, but the, uh, the robbing, the intensity of the bees needs is so marked now. You've literally got to open a bucket of syrup when they're in a robbing frenzy, and it's that you you get a few bees in the feeders. I'm afraid. So what I have to look at this. Look, what I have to do is I have to do every colony individually. I have to um, look at look and look at the buckets here. I have to literally smoke sometimes the bucket after putting the lid back on to get the bees off before I can close it again. Before I'll squash the bees. And invariably, a few do go into the feeder, but the thing is the syrup will be taken down so quickly, they can cling onto the sides for less than a couple of days and they will have their freedom again. I mean, look at this. This was a little bit of syrup spilt on the way up here. That's some cone that was in one of my feeders, but I've been pick cleaning them out a bit. I've really had a nice afternoon doing all this apiary. I've got one there that is offset. That's a... Uh, laying worker colony but I can distribute that a little bit later when the everything's taken its feed up in, in any that are really light and there's a lot of honey in those and pollen so that's a good resource to distribute again afterwards later on into the autumn but we are still the end of August we're not in September yet I've still got plenty of honey to pull I've still got colonies to treat and all the rest of it but everyone here has a treatment of some kind a few have got amateurs the rest have got cage queens and they're healthy they've got good numbers young queens so i'm feeling very good about this apiary i need to come in and strim the rest of it but as i said before little or no asian hornets last year this colony was absolutely plagued with them here um what else can i say all looking really good, full of bees, nice lots of bees in here, and those queens will be released in a week and they'll be laying away as the flow starts. But as for this, this is A1 typical, A1 typical of August. Everything you do is just absolutely, I've actually got a colony here, believe it, oh, sorry, a super here that was, I couldn't pull the other day when I came to pull it because there were still loads of bees in the above the bee, the queen exclude sorry the above the the um lozenge the, the bee escape why i don't know all the holes were open sometimes you just have that with one i couldn't understand why there was a lot of bees in the bottom maybe they'd found their way back up but this is um i'll take that home now there's still bees in there to get out before i go but i'll smoke them all out and shake them up before i go but they can't get out at the moment that's what i have to do and as I drive off, all these will go, will lift up in the air and they will disappear. But I'll smoke that, shake those bees off as I go. And then I'm done. I'll get home and just unload that super. But I cannot unload anything at home at the moment until I, until the evening. So I'm pulling honey tonight at like nine o'clock and for an hour or so. And I'll get home with it and unload it in the dark. It's the only way to be sure that you don't have a veritable problem on your hands. 
But as we say, it is what it is. It's just, you just have to change your beekeeping practices a little bit to suit, uh, you know, to suit the needs. But overall, another apiary is done. Every time I get an apiary done, I'm on my whiteboard, ticking it off. And it makes me happy that I'm getting through this. Okay, I haven't got a lot of honey to extract. I'm stacking all the honey at the moment into the veranda. But overall, things are looking good. Just a question of like we do, going back in the apiary, check you've got everything in place. And then moving on to the next one. Just get, I'm just getting my head down steady and forward and we're getting through the work. It's a lot of work, but I do find solace in noting things down that I've done because I do find that it does help me keep on top of things. This is just crazy, man. Because <laughs> I've given everything a, a THI MOL feed, which is an amazing thing to do. Because I, when I did that two years ago, every single one of my colonies was alive in the spring. I'm not saying that was the main reason, but it certainly helps. And I'm coming back afterwards with pollen sub and liquid feed with no nothing else in the syrup, but thicker syrup to start bulking out a little bit, but we'll see how long that takes. But I'm using some Canadian rocket fuel, the uh, Ultra B with all the Apis Biologic mix in it. And that should really boost these queens as they get going into the, winter, into the autumn to make those winter bees. So we shall see, but overall it's a good result. I don't know if you call that a good result, but look at them, they're just literally into everything. Unbelievable. So anyway, as I say all the time, so anyway, another day, another dollar. We're on to the next one tomorrow. And tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, I have a special guest with me for the day. But you'll see more about that then. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>